Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. So I had a little bit of a close one with a table saw this week, and I thought I'd share it with you because that can happen, especially when you get to be a little complacent with your tools, uh, when you're uh, making a bunch of repeated cuts. And so basically I did two things wrong to, to make that happen. Number one, theoretically you really shouldn't try to cut anything on the table saw that is wider than it is long. So that was mistake number one. And sometimes I can be guilty of, of trying to do that or of doing that. Um, but the other big thing was usually when I'm making any cut on the table saw, you'll see that my left hand is either here or it's off the table completely. And all of the energy is being done with my right hand and the, the pushing is towards the front of the fence. And so for whatever reason, with this piece of plywood, you'll see that my left hand comes uh, back onto the workpiece and my right hand pushes too much. That kicks the piece over and it binds up or binds into the blade. And that's when you have all that energy. That, that blade is spinning and it's gonna wanna throw that back. And so luckily, at that moment, you just try to you know, relax, you know what the situation is, and you turn the saw off with your knee. That's why it's really nice to have a hands-free off switch on your table saw. So that's one of those things that can happen. I've been using this particular table saw for close to 30 years, maybe 28 years, and that's the second time that something like that has happened to me and it's definitely my own fault. So, uh, oh, you always have to think. And that's, that's when people get hurt, when they stop thinking, when things become too routine. So, uh, so that's that. A few other things I want to talk about are uh, the shoe rack. The, this is the shoe rack. It's definitely nothing fancy. It's meant for work shoes. So this video is going to go up on Wednesday and I'll talk about some ideas if you want to make it nicer. Uh, one of the big pluses about this shoe rack is that the shoes are stored on an angle. That keeps the shoes more visible and also makes the, the shelving not quite as deep. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way this turned out even though it's not the prettiest project I've ever made. I'm posting this video on Wednesday because the sponsor for this project is Olight. This is going to be the first time I've worked with Olight, but I can see myself working with them in the future. They make a really high quality flashlight and it's, uh, I'm really impressed with it. So the reason why the, the video is going up on Wednesday because it's a time sensitive sponsor and they're doing a Black Friday sale. So the way I'm working with this project, and you can let me know in the comments or after you see it, it's probably better. Uh, while I'm building this, there'll be sort of a repetitive scene where I'm sort of nailing off the shelves and then I'll come into a little window, show the flashlight, explain uh, when the sale is and things like that. And it'll be uh, what's referred to as a window in window. Uh, and if you're familiar with iMovie, you know exactly what that is. So the reason why I'm doing that is uh, two, I, I kind of wanted to explain about the flashlight and show how it works a little bit. And also, once, once uh, the time period is over, I can edit that out on the back end of YouTube, um, the editing uh, area of YouTube. So you can back, basically go into YouTube and cut sections of, of your video out. So that's something where I thought I'd put the ad in where it was sort of just a, kind of some routine things happening on the project, but kind of kept the energy going forward and then talk about the product, and then maybe a week or two from now when the sale's no longer going, I'll just cut that out. So you can let me know what you think about that. I think it's uh, maybe a new approach to working with sponsors. Behind me here is the new workstation. This will hold my lathe and my mortising machine. This cabinet's going to have nine drawers, and I'll be working on this uh, next week, and probably this project will go up in a week or two, but this is gonna be a great addition to the shop. Just to get that extra storage space, 
and also have my lathe and my mortar sir always set up to be used. The idea is the mortar sir will face in one direction and the lathe will face in the other and to use each tool I'll simply spin the, the uh, cabinet around so it will be on wheels. Another quick question about sponsors is uh, I'm working with WD-40 as you know and I'm wondering if you know of any good uses for WD-40 in a wood shop. Because I do use WD-40, I've used it for the last you know, 30 years as a young adult till now, um, but I haven't really used it that much in a wood shop, so I'm not sure how that can work. Uh, hopefully I can find a good way to integrate it into a video. If I can't, then I might not be able to work with them. It depends really. It's, uh, it's one of those things, like with CMT, it's really easy to endorse a product like CMT when you're using the product in just about every shot because I've got a CMT blade in my table saw, CMT blade in my miter saw, CMT router bits. So uh, those are the types of sponsors that I really like to work with or companies that don't mind me talking about them a little bit but don't want them integrated into a uh, a video because once you start integrating a product into a video that has nothing to do with the project then your content is is no longer authentic and uh, so that's not something I want to do I don't mind having a sponsor and and letting people know that this project is made possible because the sponsor is supporting my channel that's great but having to make a video around a product that has nothing to do with something that I want to make or need to make, then it just doesn't work. So I'm hoping to figure out how to work with WD-40, but uh, if it requires me to use WD-40 on something I wouldn't use WD-40 on, then that doesn't work for me. But we'll see. Hopefully you guys have some good ideas. On other news, I did say that I was going to talk about that epoxy painting. And I will get that video up in a week or two. I'm actually really looking forward to it. It will be a very boring video if you're not interested in art. But if you are interested in art, it will be packed with interesting things, I think. My son Walter is going to school for film and music. And he's home for the Thanksgiving break. And we just had a short conversation about him making uh, an interview with me. Uh, so if you have any questions about woodworking, making uh, YouTube videos, being a dad, um, anything you can think of, leave them in the comments. Walter will take a look at those and we'll sit down either out here in the shop or maybe in the house or the studio and uh, shoot an interview. He bought home a, a much nicer camera that I than I use and a better microphone, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of quality it is. I thought I'd talk a little bit about music in my videos. So the music that I use in my videos is either from YouTube or from Artlist. Artlist is a paid subscription and generally when I look for a genre of music for a woodworking show, I look at folk music first. It's not that I'm the biggest folk music fan. It's just that I feel like it's the most appropriate thing for what I'm doing. I don't want to use rock and roll when I'm woodworking. I don't want to use rap or R&B or anything. I'm really looking for something very mellow and relaxing and sometimes no music at all. So that's another question. Would you rather me not use music at all? Uh, I have to say when you add music in the editing process, it kind of helps things move along. But I think at the same rate, sometimes I'll look at a video a year later and I'll, I'll just, will hate the music. So um, I'm a huge fan of music. I'm, I mean, music is a big part of my life. My kids all play instruments. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I was uh, kind of a roadie for my oldest son last night who had a gig in Red Bank. Uh, so I really like music and I would love to be able to use really good music um, but right now I'm kind of, because of copyright issues and all that stuff, I use music from pretty generic sources. And sometimes you can find some good beats and sometimes you can't. 
So uh, maybe I need to look into a different service too. Uh, actually, Walter was telling me about a service that he uses where he can actually pick the instruments. Uh, the big problem I have is often I'll find a song that I really like and about three quarters of the way into the song comes a slide guitar or something I just don't feel is appropriate. Uh, but anyway, that's something that uh, I don't know if you have an opinion on, but I know that it's a big part of making videos because uh, the music definitely can bring a video along. And my, my thought process is when I make a video, I'm trying to make something that's relaxing and something that is entertaining and also uh, educational. And so when I think of those three things, I don't think of like a heavy rock and roll or a rap. Uh, I usually envision people looking at the videos with a cup of coffee and kind of relaxing. And that's kind of like woodworking. Woodworking is slow. I know, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see woodworking videos with a lot of exciting clips and songs. That's just not woodworking. Woodworking is really repetitive and that's probably the hardest part about it is taking the time to do the steps that are kind of boring sometimes but have to be done to make a professional project. And so when I think of music that is sort of fast paced, I think that kind of goes against that whole idea. So you can let me know a lot of questions in this one. So uh, anyway, that's what's going on. This uh, shoe rack is definitely, um, it's one of these things we've really needed for a long time. And uh, it's gonna get a lot of use. The, it's definitely not the prettiest project, like I said, but it makes the most sense because I think kind of raw CDX plywood like this holds up the best to dirty work shoes because it all just becomes the same similar color. Like I can see this piece in a barn or, uh, you know, it does, it's, it's definitely not pretty, but it's going to be really uh, useful. So hopefully this video does well. We'll see. I'm going to try to get it up on uh, early on Wednesday and hopefully it will get a lot of views over the holiday weekend. That's all for now. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.